Hello everyone, my name is Drake Williams and my lovely partner is Sydney Sims and uh, we'll be telling all about an awesome group or more scientifically a phylum of marine animals called the echinoderms. Not only are they pretty neat to look at, but they're also incredibly important to marine ecosystems. Their presence greatly increases what we call biodiversity, in other words, how many different types of life there are in an environment. They do this in various ways, most notably by being an extremely deadly hunter of sea life such as clams and mussels. By being such great killers, they do not allow a specific species of mollusks for example, to overly dominate. This allows for vast genetic diversity. In addition, other echinoderms are vital for their ability to increase the levels of nutrients in the deep oceans. Many of these animals spend their life digging into the sea floor, a process which causes nutrients previously trapped in the sediment to be freed for other life, such as fish or octopi, to use for energy. Others like to burrow into coral reefs or rocks, again causing the relief of vast reserves of nutrients. However, there is a delicate balance in nature. If there are too many of these animals, coral reefs can be completely destroyed and become barren. On the other hand, if there are not enough, tiny organisms such as algae that are normally eaten can completely blanket these coral reefs, causing a drastic reduction in biodiversity. Echinoderms are also an important food source of bigger animals, such as otters, fish, crabs, and even us, humans. So not only do they provide nutrients to these bigger animals by freeing minerals from sediment and rocks, but they also then give further nutrition as a food source. At the Florida Aquarium, we have tons and tons of different animals who are all part of this phylum of Echinodermata. And remember, a phylum is a group of similar species who are all grouped together based on shared characteristics. Now, there are over 7,000 species that exist in nature that are all considered part of this group. All of these species are grouped together in this phylum because they share these characteristics. These characteristics include uh, generally living on the seafloor, what we call a benthic species, and they're also able to regenerate parts of their body. So by looking at sea stars, scientifically called asteroidia, we can easily see two of the most notable characteristics. First, this class of animals we can see, they all have what is called radial symmetry, or that essentially you could cut the animal into separate planes and all the parts would be symmetrical. Specifically for sea stars, they have what we call pentaradial symmetry, which further means that they have five sections of their body which are all the same. In addition to their symmetry, many of these species are able to regenerate or regrow these lost limbs. As they're an important food source, echinoderms are constantly being hunted. As a result, they're able to release a limb, so that the predator gets some food and the echinoderm lives to see another day. What's extremely interesting is that in many cases, the echinoderm will then regrow this lost appendage. Sea cucumbers, scientifically called holothuroidea, are an extremely interesting and unique class of animals as well. They're extremely well adapted to their environment by possessing numerous ways of defending themselves from predators. Sea cucumbers are often extremely poisonous as it prevents most predators from eating them, and also they are capable of secreting an extremely sticky substance, which can either allow them to escape from the predator or eat its shot prey. The final type of echinoderm we're going to discuss today are the sea urchins. These sea urchins are best known for their small, round body and an incredible number of spikes or spines protruding all around it. These spines are connected to their body and are a great method of protection. In fact, some species of urchins are so well adapted that they have venomous spines, which can be both extremely painful and, in rare cases, deadly. To sum it all up, I really hope that we've taught you all a little bit about this fascinating phylum. This is a group of animals that can be found just about anywhere, whether it be deep in the ocean or in the shallow water off the coasts. They're very unique, but also extremely important to ecosystems and have the potential to help solve many problems we face. And more than anything, I think they're an extremely great example of how well nature can adapt to an environment. Again, we are Drake Williams and Sydney Sims from the University of Tampa, and thank you for watching.